Hey, good morning, everyone. Before we go any further, I just want to introduce to you our newest little member of the family. This is our new dog, Pickle. He's only been with us a couple of days. And I'm going to get rid of him really quick, Smart, because I know what's going to happen. I've done enough filming to know that dogs, animals, kids, there's going to be a problem. I'm Rick Michelle. This is You Can Cook. Nice to be back. Welcome back to all of you. It's nice to see your smiling faces. My last video was leaving you with a, a so long for now. I had a little break, which was very nice. It was nice not to have to think about making videos all the time. So I really enjoyed that break, but I'm, I'm glad to be getting back into it. And during that break, my wife and I went up to Queensland. We saw some of the kids, some of the grandkids, and my latest granddaughter. So I've got three granddaughters now, and one just around the corner. So that was really nice, uh, Christmas time up in Bundaberg. We also made a kind of a spur of the moment trip down to Melbourne. My wife is Irish, and so there was a bunch of Irish, and they were staying in Melbourne. So we went down there for a week, but oh, the food in Melbourne. Something about Melbourne, they, they do food right. They do it really, really well. So we had a good time also in Melbourne. Now the time that I did have left over, I was out here working on, well basically this, I call this my Pizza Hut and Surrounds, and we're trying to make it really, really nice so it's a little paradise for us. So I've been working on that. There's a little deck around the, our little plunge pool, and I put another new uh, path in which I paved. And this year in particular, we're going to do a lot of cooking. So I'm looking really forward to that because I love being out here. I love cooking out here. Uh, also, you know, and I'm always getting on the wine when I'm out here, maybe a cigar or two. For this new year, 2019, I'm going to start off with a video showing you how to become a really good cook in three steps. Stick around. These are the lengths I go to just to ensure that it is that tender. I had to get a coffee. Yes, that's right, three easy steps. And by no means is this the only way to become a good cook. It's simply the, only, it's simply the way that I have done this. And it's all because of this one book. There are a lot of fantastic cooks out there, and I've met so many since I started this food uh, video adventure. But also, there are many out there that also I know would like to be better cooks. Here's my first ever cookbook that I purchased some 25 odd years ago and I chose this book simply because I had a hankering to know how to cook Thai dishes. Now I cooked this one, the first one, meatball thing, oh gosh. So I love Thai food so this cookbook just seemed an obvious choice to start with. Now before I really get into the crux of the three steps I want to impart a couple of things to make it even easier to become a great cook. I want you to have a can-do attitude. Tell yourself, you can do this. I can do this. I've seen in so many the, the doubt that instantly arises and the excuses for a failure of cooking a meal before they even start. And I know you've all seen this. With a can-do attitude, you won't be afraid of failure. And that's the other thing. You are going to have failures, a lot of failures, and maybe even catastrophic failures on, on a few occasions. Now, I've had many, many failures, and I still do from time to time, so you don't see me crying in my pretzels. So I'm here to tell you right now, don't be afraid to fail. That's how we learn anything in life. Uh, this fear of failure, this fear of failure uh, stops so many people from achieving great things in their lives. And I don't want you to be one of those people. I want you to be a great cook. Where's that can-do attitude? Ah, yes, there it is. So what are my three steps to becoming a great cook? Now, step one is find a recipe book. Uh, with pictures, so you kind of give you what it should look like when you're finished. Okay, it's the food that you like, that you want to emulate, your, your favorite cuisine. Make it something you really, really like, be it Italian, French, Asian, Mexican, whatever it is that really tickles your fancy. Picking your favorite cuisine is going to make it more desirable to learn. And besides, you're the one that's going to be eating it. Win-win. So you've got your cookbook. You've browsed through it a few times, and you've picked the first recipe that you want to make. Now, follow that recipe like it was the Bible. Cross those T's, dot those I's. Don't leave anything out. Don't put anything extra in. Make that dish exactly like the recipe says to do. Everything. How long to rest or marinate? If it says to marinate it overnight, then marinate it overnight. 
bake for three hours on 150 Celsius, then bake it exactly three hours on 150 Celsius. Now I'm saying to do this as, as following the recipe exactly, okay, it gives you something to measure by, a, a standard if you will. This is the bar to go by for now. It gives you a starting point. Now when you're relaxing, enjoying that meal you just cooked, this is the time to analyze what you've just cooked. Too salty, not enough of that, too much of that. If you've lucked out, it could be just the way you like it. It could be perfect. Ask some, anyone else at the table what they think of your meal. Now you may have to ask them to be completely honest because lots of people, let's face it, they won't be, they won't be honest to your face. Now there's a quick note here. We all know that one person we can't be honest with or we're careful with what we say if you're that person then I'll have to get Dr. Phil on your case. Don't be that person. So if they are honest and it's not what you want to hear, still take it on board and learn from that. Take critique. You've just asked them to be honest. Take it graciously and don't be insulted. This is one of the greatest ways to learn. And one more thing, be completely honest with yourself. This brings us to our next two steps as they're both kind of somewhat intertwined. Step two is simple as cooking that recipe over and over again. Make, analyze, repeat. Until such time, you don't even have to open your cookbook to make it. You know it by heart. You can make this dish in your sleep. And it doesn't need mentioning, this is of course the recipe you love, one of your favorite dishes, maybe a signature dish. Otherwise, this step isn't warranted. Now, if it is a dish you've tried and it's not up to your alley, not to your standard, then move on until you find another one that is worthy of your time and taste buds. Don't waste time on something you don't really like. Step three, experiment. Okay, you've tried a recipe, you like it, but it needs something. It's lacking some oomph, something. When you found a recipe you like, but you feel it needs something, or you feel it would be better off without an ingredient in the recipe, then the next time you make that recipe, change it. Okay, this is where experimenting comes in hand. Take out that ingredient or substitute it with something else. You can even add other ingredients that you feel will work within that recipe. Now this is experimenting to find what you like to make this recipe work, to make it better, more taste, more exotic, whatever. This is the key element to becoming a fantastic cook. Now not every recipe out there is a fantastic dish. As a matter of fact, a lot of recipes out there are just plain bleh, they're awful, but you, with your experimenting skills that you're going to learn, will be able to turn a rather boring dish into something amazing. Now I get asked this all the time when I'm at little parties. Oh, what, is this missing something? And you know, we had a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but voila, it, it's, it's a much better dish. Those are my three steps to becoming a great cook. They're not the only ones. It certainly won't happen overnight. You really do need to put time into this, a lot of time, because you have to cook a lot. Not a big deal really, because you have to eat, so why not make it as good as you can? Another win-win situation. If you have a passion for cooking, this is going to be even easier. Having a passion for something just makes it fun and not a chore. So cook, cook, and cook some more. Experiment all the time, and remember, you are not afraid of failure. Now my main goal with my video channel or mission statement is to inspire you to cook great food and more of it. It's as simple as that. Now you can see why I always end my videos like this. Get in that kitchen of yours, cook up some great food, experiment, don't be afraid to try new things that make this dish your dish. So that's it for this video. I really want to see all of you throughout this year with all the videos that's coming up. We've got some good stuff coming up and lots of pizzas in the Pizza Hut. Okay, so I'm Rick Michelle. This is You Can Cook. Stay safe, everyone. So long for now.